there's items. Uh, we've seen a lot of strange Z moves over the tournament. We've seen a lot of unexpected focus dashes, that sort of thing. I uh, definitely don't want to get caught surprised here. Uh, winning this series will allow players to move on to the top eight, but losing would end their tournament. So uh, can't make any mistakes. The stakes are all on the table now. The stakes are all on the table, and what those tables are is going to be Alex Gomez leading the charge here with the Nihiligo and the Kyogre as Ryusei matches that with Xerneas and Incineroar. Nihiligo already pressuring that Xerneas quite a bit. Yeah, we haven't seen a whole lot of Nihiligo over the course of the weekend, but uh, two Pokemon here that it's very good against. Um, not necessarily going to get a free ride trying to do that damage. Uh, Incineroar used for Fake Out, which you could target on this Nihiligo there. Uh, flinch it, prevent, you, prevent it from moving, and then also stop any potential focus dash there. Uh, doing so, though, of course, would be very dangerous with a Kyogre on the opposite side of the field. Uh, water Spout would likely knock out Incineroar from here, so a uh, pretty classic pair of leads from this team matchup. I think we've seen this a few times over the course of the weekend in the hand of other players, uh, but these two have both done very well, both of them putting up impressive five and two records, so we'll have to see if we see any tricks or any interesting strategies from these trainers that we haven't seen earlier in the tournament. We've seen a lot of different team compositions here, but I like that Ryuse is going with a little bit of a bread and butter lead here. Recognizes, though, that Incineroar probably not too safe on the battlefield. Wants to bring out Moongus instead, maybe drawing some attention away from Xerneas. Xerneas going for Protect. So this might be a little bit of a dead turn here for Alex, unless it reads it really well that Amoongus is gonna come in in that Incineroar slot, but ends up doubling in to that Xerneas. Will have a little bit of damage though into the Amoongus slot, but not, not too, ooh, a lot more than I expected actually. Critical hit. Yeah. Oh, and go play Critico indeed. Uh, that's some big damage for Alex. Uh, really uh, weakens Ryusei's potential options here. I, I love the play that he made where um, you know, there's no way he could safely set up a Geomancy last turn. Would have had to have given up Incineroar for free. Uh, moving Amoongus in instead, it put him in a much better position where um, it could absorb a potential Sludge Bomb for that Nihiligo, uh, survive that, and probably another Water Attack too. Instead, with that critical hit, it's right on the edge where you'd be almost concerned about Nihiligo picking up a knockout instead. Um, tricky spot, but if he wants to, he can get that Rage Powder Geomancy off. It just, you know, is he willing to pay what he'd have to give up, especially not knowing you know, does Nihiligo know Nihil 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 Trick Room? Well, it is going to be Rage Powder first, so Ryusei may be setting up for that classic Geomancy turn there. Um, but Nihiligo going to go ahead and fire back here. Does get the knockout onto Amoongus, so Beast Boost will activate. This is going to increase those attack stats for Nihiligo uh, quite a bit here. So I think that Xerneas is going to be a little scared, even though it is going to get this Geomancy off and the stab boost that come with it. Yeah, so Geomancy is going to increase the special attack, special defense, and speed of this journey. It uh, does give Ryusei a big advantage for the coming turns, but he had to lose a Pokemon to do it. Kyogre's also need a free attack off. Uh, definitely don't want to see a critical hit here, which would uh, ignore that special defense boost, and Alex is hoping to see as much damage as he can. Full power water spout with no partner next to Xerneas. Well, I don't think that's going to be a critical hit, but it does do more than half damage to Xerneas, even with the, the defense boost. Yeah, I mean, that's important, too. Um, you know, one great thing about the Rayogre team combinations, you do have that Rayquaza, which typically has extreme speed to move with increased priority. So even though Xerneas is going to be quicker than Rayquaza is, should it come in later, if you can weaken it enough, it can still check the Xerneas with extreme speed. Um, it's definitely still too healthy to be knocked out by an extreme speed right now, but probably any other attack would weaken it enough that Rayquaza could come in later and clean this up. So Ryusei has got to be careful. He really doesn't want the Xerneas to take any more damage. Kang has got a great Pokemon to help ensure that that happens. Uh, fake out. Uh, could stop one of these two Pokemon from moving, allowing Xerneas to get an attack off a little more safely. Um, but you have to see what Alex does. You know, does he just sell out trying to uh, attack this Xerneas with both of his Pokemon? Does he protect to try to get around this uh, fake out? It's also important to note that Ryusei did not bring Groudon to this matchup. So there's no chance for him to control the weather on this one. Yeah, just choosing to, I guess, look, well, I know the you know, advantage of the other side of this matchup is that you're great against Groudon, so I'm not even going to bother. Yeah, definitely doesn't have to bother with this because Mega Kangaskhan able to dish out quite a bit of damage after that Mega Evolution here. But a Protect coming out from Nihiligo on Alex's side knows that maybe Ryusei is going for some damage into that slot here. Kyogre also going to double Protect, so Alex going to be able to stay safe for some of this damage. Does not want to take a single hit from that Xerneas. Yeah, Kangaskhan goes for the fake out of the Nihiligo slot and Xerneas attacks as well, but with these Protects, 
uh, doesn't make a difference. Dazzling Gleam falls harmlessly against the shields of the two Pokemon, and Alex just says, well, uh, it's not really anything you can do to punish me double protecting here, so I'm just going to get around the fake out completely. Uh, worth, like you mentioned, looking at Ryusei's team. Uh, so since he didn't select Groudon, he has sold out completely for the Xerneas comp. He has Rage Powder and Moongus and two different Pokemon that no fake out. Uh, the whole point of this team is that I'm going to use all of the control tools I have mm -hmm. to try to let Xerneas attack as safely as possible, which makes that damage so important. Xerneas a little under half health already. Uh, there's a lot of great tools, but no way to redirect attacks anymore. Um, Alex is pretty close to the point where he kind of just fell out for offense. Um, he's still got to be careful, but you know, just one or two chip shots under that Xerneas, and he's going to look like he's in a very good position to take this game. Uh, it's a pretty significant early lead, even though this Xerneas' Dazzling Gleam is going to do a ton of damage. See those damage rolls right now here, ton. but it's not going to do uh, too, too, too much here. So now Xerneas has to take that sludge on the chin and it's not going to be able to do so. Gets knocked out before it can do any significant damage to Alex's side of the field. And it, or more importantly, gets that beast boost again. Yeah, now they go starting to get carried away, and you know, Kangaskhan, a single target attacker, only going to be able to take out one of these Pokemon. Uh, does score a knockout on the Kyogre, so that is a big knockout. Tries to keep him in the game, but um, you know, there's two Pokemon left for Ryose, who are used in large part because they can use Fake Out. With only two Pokemon remaining, they're not going to be able to get in and out of battle and use those Fake Outs. So Incineroar is going to be able to do it once on this turn, uh, and again, there's not really any way to uh, punish. Alex just double protecting here if he chooses to. Uh, it's a big advantage that Nile Ego has been clutch in this game. And with two sort of supportive folk on, on the side of Ryusei, uh, he's looking like he's in trouble in this game one. Yeah, there's really only single uh, damage attacks, like you mentioned, from that Kangaskhan to... But who do you target down, right? That Nihil is pushing out a lot of pressure with that double beast boost activated now. And then you also have Rayquaza that not only can Mega Evolve, but Dragon Ascent is going to do a lot of damage after it does so. Yeah, and there's still a Pokemon in the back to be concerned about, where, you know, if it's something like uh, Alex's own Incineroar, he can easily bring that in, intimidate these two physical attackers, uh, make it even easier for Nihil Ego to get some more attacks off. Uh, Incineroar's bulk is pretty significant, but Nalego pretty much the only Pokemon in the game that can attack with special Rock-type attacks effectively, get around that Intimidate. Uh, it's a really great positioning for Alex. He's done a great job in this match. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the leads, the leads kind of started it all off and turns Euro. It was so important for both of these players to really set up what they needed to. And unfortunately, Ryusei couldn't quite get on the rotation of switching out fake out supporters for that Xerneas and doesn't really have too much oomph now in the back. Double Protect now is going to bait out a fake out here and other attacks from both of the Pokemon on Ryusei's field and going to be trying to target down that Nihiligo to no effect. I think both players realize how powerful this Nihiligo is here, but you no know, reason for Alex to give up anything free, and that's, you know, the struggle of building your team around uh, one Pokemon for this battle, where uh, there's just no way to punish Alex playing conservatively now. Uh, and there's some two very powerful offensive Pokemon on his side of the field remaining. Uh, full health Rayquaza, you know, if you ignore it to go after this Nihiligo, it's going to eat you up. And the, kind of the reverse, you can't ignore Nihiligo either. Um, really interesting to see how this has played out. Uh, also interesting to see Rayquaza moving slower than Nihiligo on the protects there. That is really interesting to see, isn't it? I'm, I'm going to be curious if, if both of these players have figured out a little more information about what priority these Pokemon are going to move in. But Rayquaza is going to Mega Evolve for this, this turn here. We'll proc that Delta Stream ability from Rayquaza. And now you've got Extreme Speed, which will move first and priority-wise into that Kangaskhan slot, but it's not quite over yet. You still have to take out this bulky Pokemon, but it is going to do that, and because Nihiligo was able to move second, it's going to get that third Beast Boost. Yeah, this may be one of the few games we see a Pokemon get all four knockouts, uh, which is particularly powerful if your Pokemon like Nihiligo that's boosting your stats. Uh, of course, you don't need stat boost too much once all four of the other Pokemon have been knocked out, but uh, really getting to see the power of the Poison and Rock-type Ultra Beast there. Uh, it's kind of a quirky Pokemon where its stat distribution is a little bit strange, uh, has a combination of moves that few other Pokemon have, but really getting to see how powerful it can be when it's put in a position to be successful. I have another fun fact for you. The fairy type was introduced into the Pokemon game to make poison a little bit stronger. So Nihiligo showing us exactly what they meant when they introduced that fairy typing there. But yeah. still not totally over yet. Both players going to try to figure out as much information as possible, including the move sets on the Pokemon that they have on their field. And Cinemar, though, Ooh, not going to be able to survive through that one. So that's going to be the fourth and final knockout, giving Alex Gomez game one.
A really impressive game by Alex. Him and Naligo showing off a little bit there, getting four knockouts of the same Pokemon and a very dominant victory. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how the players adjust to this one as we move to game two. Uh, Ryusu's strategy was very one-dimensional there. It's like, hey, I'm going to commit everything to powering up my Xerneas. Uh, one of the weaknesses of doing something like that is that you're very vulnerable to uh, bad luck where that critical hit, you know, it's not like it knocked out the Xerne or the Amoongus in one hit or anything, but it definitely made that position uh, much weaker for him. However, yeah, that's just what's going to happen, right? Where when you're, the crux of your strategy is this one Pokemon must succeed, um, it's much easier to disrupt that than if you're like trying to build a team where you have four Pokemon who can all do some damage. You know, on Alex's side, we saw Nihiligo carry the weight, but uh, it didn't need to. You know, Kyogre contributed, Rayquaza could have if there had been any Pokemon left for it to defeat. Um, it's a little bit easier with a balanced strategy like that. I'm curious if Ryuse maybe will uh, try to let other, some of his other Pokemon help out a little bit more of his time, or if he just decided that, hey, in this matchup, the best way I can handle Rayogre is to give everything to Xerneas. It was just no flexibility. I know Ryusei was a little hard stuck in the strategy that they wanted to implement here, but could they still bring the same four Pokemon, but maybe different leads? I, I feel like turn zero, it already looked like a bad matchup for Ryusei, just based on what was on the field. Yeah, I agree. I think um, perhaps that's just the way he's looking at this matchup, where, you know, again, Rayogre in general should win against Xerneas Ground, and that is the side that has the advantage. Um, there aren't a whole lot of other Pokemon on his side of the field that seem like they were selected to make that matchup easier. So maybe his answer to that situation is like, all right, I'm just going to be a Xerneas team. Um, he must have played other Rayogre teams to have gotten to this point. Um, so you, I don't want to sell it what he's doing short, but I agree with you. I think um, with a strategy like that one, you can't afford to lose any health unnecessarily. So and maybe this turn zero term, as we call it, with the team preview, where I just have to guess which Pokemon Alex to get out first a little bit better, uh, try to get Geomancy off without giving so much HP up, and hopefully have four Pokemon healthy once he does. I think if he has to lose a Pokemon uh, to use Geomancy again, especially if it's giving up Incineroar or Amoongus, who are really important to that sort of strategy, his team is probably going to wilt again. Uh, very important for him to get off to a better start this time. I know that we talked about Groudon being at a disadvantage for Yusei against Alex's team composition, but I feel like those ground type moves that Groudon ends up, you know, tends to be trained with might prove really significant against some of the Pokemon on Alex's team. Yeah, I agree. I was, I'm, I'm a little surprised that he's not trying to use the Groudon at all. I mean, it's tough, but you know, when you get run over by a Nail Ego, a Pokemon four times weak against ground type attacks, it probably does at least make you think, well, what if I brought Groudon? Um, I think it's a great read on Alex's side where he had the perfect selection of four Pokemon to deal with what uh, Ryuse tried to do, but I do think that's an option where, you know, at least you can try to force Nail Ego off the field, force it to protect, uh, don't let it just attack so openly like that, because we saw how powerful that Sludge Bomb was, you know, even once, uh, Xerneas had the Geomancy boost. It was able to knock it out from almost half health. You just can't afford to have those attacks coming your way uncontested. Kyogre was able to dish out a lot of damage as well with those water spouts, so Groudon would at least be able to contest some of that weather control on the field as well. But we're about to get into game two here between Alex Gomez and Ryusei Yamane, and I want to see some adaptations for Ryusei's side. It will be Amoongus and Kangaskhan, so that is an, adapt ad 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 Mahaligo and Kyogre, it worked last time, may as well use it again. Yeah, I do like it a little bit better in the context of this lead matchup. Um, this time, Ryusei, not risking Xerneas at all, has two of his more supportive Pokemon out here together. Uh, but one nice thing about them is that um, there is a little bit less threat on the other side of at least Mahaligo picking up an early knockout of the Amoongus. You still want to give up a lot of health, but um, there isn't like a clear way for Alex just to run over this combination the way there was when Incineroar was led and had the big disadvantage where it just couldn't stay out with Kyogre. Um, also to your point, um, one nice thing about this is like there's still a reasonable threat that Groudon is in the back. Incineroar could feasibly be the Pokemon that was removed. Um, I think one of the things that really hurt Ryusei in the first game is that uh, it quickly became simple for Alex because he didn't have to be considered with, or didn't have to consider that sort of thing where Ryusei kind of did. He never even got to see Alex's final Pokemon. So uh, this time I think uh, with this better elite matchup forcing Alex to make the moves and we see Karkana come into the field, a Pokemon we didn't see in the first game. We didn't see it, but maybe it was in the back, that fourth and final Pokemon, but now it is two Ultra Beasts trying to battle it out against this Mega Kangaskhan. Moongus though gonna take a lot of pressure off of Kangaskhan and also you've got Fake Out on the field. Yep, Nihiligo though going for a protect. 
doesn't want to take too much damage here for the Kangaskhan. Did Alex read that correctly about where his takeout was going to go? Nope, he's going to go into the Katana slot. Yeah, still, this is going to be pretty harmless, and I think most importantly, if Amoongus goes for his four, I guess it's in the Nalego slot, but Kartana would have uh, been immune to it as a Grass-type Pokemon, and I think that's the key for Kartana in this matchup. You know, Amoongus, we didn't really get to see too much in the previous game, and sort of had no option but to go for the uh, Rage Powder and Faint for the team. This time with a full health Amoongus, not threat nearly as much. I'm going to try to put some of those Pokemon on Alex's side of the field to sleep. Um, another way of setting up the field so that Xerneas can use Geomancy later. You know, you control Pokemon directly with Fake Out and Rage Powder, or you can just allow them to sleep harmlessly as you boost your own stats and attack later. You just put them all to sleep, they can't do anything to you, right? So maybe that's a little bit of the strategy here. But Ryuse, after Mega Evolving the Kangaskhan, wants to put Incineroar back onto the field. Some more Fake Out pressure for you on Ryuse's side. Yeah, and Cinder is going to be great against the Cortana, and we do see that it's likely Ryusa going for the same strategy as he did in game one. Yeah, probably is Ernius in the back, huh? But, ooh, Cortana already doing a decent bit of damage there, but this is interesting. We saw a really really interesting tech choice for the item slot on Incineroar. Yeah, Kartana tagging that Incineroar is a super effective Sacred Sword, and then it bails out of battle with the eject button. Um, I, I think it's reasonably likely that he was expecting an attack in event slot, so probably triggering the eject button on purpose on Ryusei's side, although taking maybe a little more damage than he was expecting to. Ooh, that's going to be about health, health, and Kangaskhan, but Spore will actually get a chance to proc this time. Yeah, so uh, he had to give up a little bit to do it with both of the two fake out users taking some damage, but we do see Naligar falling asleep. Uh, Kartana been intimidated now, so it's not going to dish out too, too much damage. Uh, of course, I have to keep in mind that Amoongus, in addition to not being able to use Spore on it, can't draw attacks away with Rage Powder either, but uh, does put Ryusei in a much better position this time. Uh, on, although, it's also tempting fate a little bit, where of all the Pokemon to put asleep and then try to set up uh, Xerneas' Geomancy, you know, unless you also have Rage Powder there, you really don't want to use Geomancy in front of Nihiligo and just hope it doesn't wake up. Uh, waking up and sludge bombing at an inopportune time could be uh, very dangerous indeed. Yeah, Ryusei is going to have to still play it a little bit safe there and worry about that threat, but now it's the two fake out users on Ryusei's side of the field still keeping that fourth and final Pokemon a secret. I feel like Ryusei really is trying to eliminate some of the bigger threats, threats those Ultra Beasts, before bringing Xerneas out onto the field, particularly that Nihiligo, but Kartana's dishing out some serious damage here. While Nihiligo is asleep, it's going to take quite a bit of damage there. Kangaskhan putting it well within striking distance for Incineroar. Yeah, Kangaskhan itself going down for its troubles, though. Uh, kind of good and bad elements of this, where Arisa is going to get a free switch out of it, uh, perhaps to bring in that uh, Xerneas if he wants to try to go for the Geomancy, uh, but still somewhat dangerous position. Uh, the Kartana has now been intimidated multiple times, so even though it's a Steel-type Pokemon, it's going to have a hard time dishing out huge damage to the Xerneas, and we do see that final Pokemon coming in. Same strategy as last time, but different leads might have put Ryusei in a different position for the end game. Has gotten Nihiligo and Kartana down within striking distance, so I feel like Ryusei is feeling a little bit more comfortable about preparing Xerneas for that Geomancy. Yeah, he's behind a Pokemon counter. You'd assume the two Pokemon we can't see here on Alex's side of the field, field are Rayquaza and Kyogre, neither of them do especially well against Xerneas, but it does get that Geomancy boost. So, you know, if Nalego doesn't wake up here, Xerneas can get going. There's still Incineroar here and Amoongus, who just restored some HP, most likely with a Regenerator ability. Uh, there's a lot of damage mitigation left on the other side of the field. Goes for the fake out, doesn't risk Nalego waking up. Yeah, but Kartana's able to get some damage out too. It is a critical hit there, so going to do maybe about 50 damage. But Nalego is, more importantly, still asleep. Yeah, unfortunately, this Geomancy is not going to go quite the way that Ryuse intended it to, it looks like. Uh, Zerni is preparing to boost its stats, but uh, ordinarily that move takes two turns to charge, and Kartana's attack might, attack might be lowered, but that does not stop it from using Knock Off to remove that power, force Xerneas to waste a turn powering up here, um, and give uh, Nihiligo another chance to wake up and try to get that Sludge Bomb down on Xerneas while it's increasing its stats. I feel like Ryuse is in a position where he's really, really hoping that Nihiligo does not wake up here. Uh, Kartana is still going for another move, another bit of damage there into the Xerneas slot, Ooh, but it's not sleepy. Up. It is not sleepy anymore, and Xerneas, without getting a chance to use Geomancy, is going to get knocked out here. 
an absolutely clutch knockoff by the Cortana. Now they're able to wake up, gets that beast boost, and we're down to just two supportive Pokemon left on Ryusei's side of the field. Uh, still all four Pokemon remaining on Alex's side. Uh, the Ultra Beasts have invaded Alola, and it looks like they could be bringing a victory here for Alex and send him on to the top eight of the Pokemon World Championships. Just bringing this battle into a completely other dimension here, but it's not over just yet. We could still see some misses, who knows? RNG is still a very big factor in this game, but based on how those Ultra Beasts have been performing so far, I feel like Alex understands exactly what he needs to do to take this one home. Yeah, we'll switch Cartana out, shed these attack drops from Intimidate. Won't have to worry about any more of those. Now that uh, Ryusei is down to two Pokemon, won't be able to switch. Also negates that Regenerator ability. Uh, being able to switch Pokemon in and out of battle is just so important to be supportive Pokemon on Ryusei's side, but Alex has been able to shut that down with these knockouts. Shutting it down and playing it safe. Still can't give anything up for free here, so Alex doing their best to maneuver this matchup like Ryusei still has a significant chance of taking this one home. Yeah, and then getting Kyogre in for free there is going to further reduce his odds. An illegal able to absorb some attacks with his Protect, and now a nothing stopping Kyogre from using Water Spout. Ryusei realized it forfeits, and Alex is going to move on with a really, really impressive victory in that.